So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the UK's hopes of a swift uh, transatlantic post-Brexit free trade deal dealt a blow as Biden's commerce chief says it's not worth spending years and a lot of blood, sweat and tears working on. Essentially, they're saying well, it's not worth it. It's very interesting, her statements, actually. You know, um, the trade uh, secretary, I think her name is Catherine Tai, saying that transatlantic free trade agreements were a 20th century tool. So quite an interesting phrase, especially when we were told that a UK-US deal would be a big prize because there is no EU-US deal, but there are a load of bilateral agreements between the two um, entities. Um, but they have got rid of the tariffs, you know, the Trump-imposed tariffs on steel, which, um, you know, the US got rid of for the EU at the start of the year. So it does show you who's um, who's the big dog. But, um, you know, the UK, the, the, the Americans did that to make a point on the UK. Um, but uh, anyways... I wouldn't get rid of that moving thing. So the United States appeared to hit uh, Boris Johnson's hopes of striking a post-Brexit free trade deal today as a top official said an agreement is not worth spending years of blood, sweat and tears over. And, you know, the Americans have been fairly consistent on this under Joe Biden that the trade deal won't happen. I don't know why we keep begging them for one. It's very embarrassing. In an uncomfortable moment for Trade Secretary Anne-Marie, her U.S. counterpart Catherine Tai last night uh, used a joint press conference to suggest a commerce cov covenant was a very 20th century tool, which is quite interesting. Britain has spent years trying to get first the Trump and then the Biden administration to agree to a trade deal that would represent a blue ribboned moment for the post-Brexit um, commerce. So essentially, we're desperately looking for a trade deal to justify Brexit really which is simply not happening I don't know if we've inherited the kind of EU's bilateral deals with the Americans if anyone does know uh, let me know I'm going to put a sidebar over this stuff as well because the Daily Mail's um, images are just gross I want to ensure the conversations and the approaches that we bring today especially with the press of uh, the pressures that we are facing are maximally responsive so that we don't spend years and a lot of blood sweat and tears working on something that isn't going to be relevant to the needs of our people and economies so then she's saying it's just it's just not worth it um you know we're facing pressure elsewhere and those are the things we need to work on even though she's in charge of trade which is really weird like her whole job is trade it's not dealing with like the the situation in ukraine right now she and Miss Trevelyan met as the US announced it was removing punitive tariffs on British steel and aluminium, who are bit, which have been in place since 2018, or aluminium, as some of you guys might say. Um, but, you know, it was Trump who did this, and Joe Biden's gotten rid of him, which is great. It's going to help US, uh, sorry, UK steel. But, um, again, you know, it's, gonna ha it's, it's already helped the EU. So those deals that you know american um companies that are made with the eu before the tariffs have gotten rid of on our steel will still be in place for a bit longer in return the uk will drop retaliatory tariffs on american brands such as harley davidson you know the uh, motorcycles under trump the us imposed a 25 percent duty on foreign steel and 10 percent on foreign aluminium i'm gonna i'm gonna mix those two up in it aluminum and aluminium i can feel it before the press conferences, uh, Miss Anne-Marie had hoped formal negotiations on a US trade deal may begin by the end of this year. And th this is the bit that bamboozled me a lot, with expectations they could be completed within 18 months. So someone in the British government thinks they could conclude a US-UK trade deal within 18 months, even though trade deals can take around five to seven years. That's wild. Whoever, you know, whoever briefed the Daily Mail about it taking 18 months is wild. Absolutely wild. There's no way... Um, that can happen honestly unless we capitulate a lot to the americans like we did um for, to get the australia deal and the new zealand deal there's absolutely no way given how big the uh you know how big america is and how many different things there'll be at, at play you know the pharmaceutical industry the agricultural industry the manufacturing industries so many different companies and industries would want to get involved in a um a trade deal especially given that the nhs would be a big prize for the americans in terms of getting um their kind of companies involved in services for the NHS. They can make a lot of money like that just through other companies I've had uh, through privatization of the NHS. So again, within 18 months, that's insane. I, I genuinely don't think that would be possible, especially given how slow Congress is. Miss Anne-Marie last night said countries around the world were queuing up to sign trade deals with Britain as she kick-started negotiations with Canada. And again, the UK already had, had a deal with Canada uh, the CETA deal under the EU. Um, the UK is saying we're going to sign a better deal with Canada that does stuff with digital uh, rights and other things, which 
again, it's just going to be us selling data to the Canadians, isn't it? That's what's going to happen. The Trade Secretary is flying to Ottawa to launch formal talks on a chunky new agreement to replace arrangements carried over from our memberships of the membership of the EU. And I thought the kind of the CETA deal would up, be up for renegotiations, renegotiations, anyways, given the Canadians can get concessions out of us. So if that wasn't the case, it's quite interesting. We've done this. In an interview with the Daily Mail, she revealed plans to sign a deal with Israel by the end of this year, which I don't know if the EU have a formal um, trade deal with Israel, but there are bilateral agreements and other things in place, I believe. It will be the fourth from scratch post-Brexit trade deal. Uh, it must be bilaterals then. Following successful negotiations with Australia, New Zealand and Singapore. Again, these huge tit- the huge titan that is Singapore buying and selling goods. I mean, Singapore... Singapore actually do have a deal with the EU, right? Yeah, they do. They signed one, and that's when um, I think that's when the Dyson guy moved. So that's that's a fraudulent one there. Um, New Zealand, Australia, the EU definitely don't have deals with them. I think they might have bilaterals, but that's about it. So the Singapore point is actually, I think that's a bit of a lie. Uh, key targets are now the US, which has been scuppered. Mexico, which I think is possible, but again, Mexico is very far. But um, they have cool stuff over there, you know, really good food stuff. And India, which that one's problematic because Indians want better access for, you know, easier visas for Indian students, which is nothing wrong with that. That did scupper EU-India talks because of Theresa May, I believe. Um, they also want to keep high tariffs on things like alcohol and other things. Um, and you got the CPTPP, which again is too many letters, which is a block of 11 Pacific nations. Um, you got the Gulf Cooperation Council comprising of Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. So you got the pretty much some of the worst countries when it comes to human rights: Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, or Qatar, I think that's how some people pronounce it, and Saudi Arabia and UAE. So some of the worst countries there. We're going to be, you know, and the thing is, Brexit has pushed us closer to despotic nations, really, hasn't it? If we're going to be desperate for trade deals with the Gulf Cooperation Council. Um, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, those countries, again, are very, very far away, so there's going to be a limited amount of trade anyways. People are queuing up, wanting to do trade deals with us, which I find very encouraging, um, she said. And again, you know, how much, you know, these countries have very small populations, the Gulf Council ones. Um, they're going to have a fair decent amount of purchasing power, but how much are we going to be able to sell to them, considering they're not going to buy alcohol from us? Not really. Um, they're not going to buy much meat from us anyways, unless it's halal, so it's problematic. We're not going to be able to sell a ton to them. We do ourselves down. The rest of the world thinks the UK is amazing. Well, you know, who, who, who are those people? What do they want from us? And they want to work with a trusted partner. No one can trust us. Rule one of life, don't trust Tories. Never trust a Tory, ever. Anne-Marie, who was nicknamed the New Deal tra- uh, Canada 2.0, said the continuity trade agreement rolled over from Britain's member of the EU was quite old-fashioned uh, and not really digital trade focused, which I don't think we've got much in in terms of the newer trade deals anyways with New Zealand and Australia. There's not much on digital uh, stuff, but I think it's going to be selling data to the Canadians. This is an opportunity to take it to a much higher level. She added, looking at things like digital trade, which is an important area, by removing red tape, and Marie said the agreement would strip away costs for the consumer. I mean, how how is what what digital services are British consumers buying from the Canadians? What strip away costs and effort for businesses? I mean, this is just what what is she talking about here? In blue, if anyone knows, then feel free to let me know. British officials believe thousands of smaller firms will be encouraged to start trading with Canada if barriers can be removed, such as simplifying paperwork, which, again, is going to be helped. But how many of these businesses actually have experience selling to third countries? Not many. Especially since all of these different countries. I I wouldn't be surprised if individual US states had specific rules around imports from foreign countries, honestly. Miss uh, Anne-Marie said the new agreement would open access for British firms to Canadian government procurement contracts, which will be really big business for some of our really important construction and individual industrial service partners. But if you flip that round, right, if you flip that round and give Canadian, um, you know, um, Canadian businesses um, access to our procurement contracts, that's really going to help a lot of the Canadian businesses out, Um, especially if NHS contracts on the table, that's a lot of money for them. That's why they're on top of my pile, because they really leaned in and said, we want to move to the next phase. So I said, OK, you're on, talking about the Canadians. Uh, she heads to Canada following two days of talks with the US counterparts. She's having a right, um, right nice holiday, isn't she? Yesterday, she met with US Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo to finalise a deal on removing the tariffs. 
Um, so yeah, they've just cut and paste bits from other articles, a bit lazy. Uh, Anne-Marie believes formal negotiations on a US trade deal uh, may begin by the end of the year, which is not going to happen. I think Congress have got bigger things to deal with rather than us, honestly. Um, and it's not going to be completed within 18 months. The Mail revealed yesterday she believes there has definitely been a change in approach from Joe Biden, who put talks on the back burner when he entered the White House. You're not just going to be dealing with Joe Biden, though. That's the thing. Like, Because of the UK system, it's predominantly you'll be dealing with the cabinet and ministers. But in the American system, because it's decentralised, you're not just going to be dealing with the president. You're going to be dealing with people like Richard Neal, who have said no to the agreement, who's on the committee for these things. Richard Neal taken at this uh, picture. Um, he mentions it here. A bilateral trade agreement with the UK is desirable. There's no question about that. I'm open to it. But what I'm not open to is holding the Good Friday Agreement um, hostage over domestic agreements. His committee writes trade bills and without its support, a deal would not be approved. So again, you know, you're not just dealing with um, you're not just dealing with President Joe Biden, you're dealing with so many different people. And the one thing that cuts between Republicans and Democrats is Ireland and the issues surrounding Ireland. And do you know what one of the issues surrounding Ireland is? The Northern Ireland Protocol, the Good Friday Agreement, and the Tories. So, you know, Joe Biden could be more open to a trade deal, which is great. But the simple fact is, if Congress isn't, you're going to get nowhere. Especially with rising tensions in Northern Ireland, which is something we're probably going to talk about at some point, depending on how the scheduling goes. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.